you guys, welcome back to the CN Silver Creek Sub. Um, today I'm going to try my hand at sharing some basic weathering tips. Um, we're gonna weather this 32, 34. It's for a member at the club here. Um, these are super easy to weather. I, uh, I found anyway, a CN ES44, ET44 here. Um, you don't have to do the grills because obviously they're all black. Um, there's a couple to do at the back here that I do. These guys turn black in real life just from exhaust and air intake and the rads are in here so it's blowing air through and all that stuff. So um, as far as painting grills go, it's just those two which makes it very, very easy. Um, and then we're going to do some panel liner which fills in all this stuff and makes it look cool. Um, this is an out of the box model. All I've done so far is add smoke box reflective safety striping. Um, that's this stuff right here. Comes in a sheet. I just add them onto the steps here. Uh, the steps in real life are the bottom's a rectangle. The next steps up are shaped like this. So I don't cut the I don't cut the edges off each one to make it the, like the right shape. I just put them on as they are. So that's up to the modeler. Um, otherwise, you just cut them to length and stick them on. I try to dodge some of the warning labels, but this whole sill is covered in warning labels in reality, or when they come from out of the box. So cover some of them up so you get that reflective striping. That's not a prerequisite for this weathering tutorial. It's just uh, something I do. The other thing I do that we're going to start with here is the window gaskets. Um, they're pretty simple to do. The hardest part of the window gaskets is getting the wipers off without bending them all to crap. So that's just a style that you're going to have to learn on your own. Um, I use, I just use my hobby knife. I go up there nice and nice and easy in behind the wipers and try to get them off and, and hold it in there and kind of pull them off nice and easy. So once they're off and set aside so we don't lose them, because that's happened before many times. Uh, the next thing to do is to get the windows out. All right, so I just rewatched the first video. It's not too bad, I think it'll it will work as long as I keep this centered on the uh, on the mat here. So, next thing we're going to do is I'll try and keep it your way and not break this all the crap. Um, scale trains and Ather and Genesis probably up to the last oh I don't know three years. Um, all scale trains I've done so far anyway are independent windows in here. Um, Atherin went through a phase where both windows are one piece and they're put in from the back of the cab. So this, this technique won't work on the, on, uh, on those type anyway. I don't know what the serial numbers are or when that became a thing and when it didn't, I'm not quite sure. So you just have to kind of, kind of test it out for these. Anyway, usually you can find a little piece in here somewhere along here along the edge somewhere where the window isn't quite flush. If you end up scratching the sill or the gasket that's already there, it's not a big deal because we're going to color that back in uh, with your general or just average Sharpies. I have about four different sizes and I'll show you that here shortly. So I'll try to find a little spot in here somewhere. It's probably easier not trying to put my head inside the camera, but not there. How about this one? Nope. Oh, there we go. It's coming out now. So don't worry about scratch. See this here? It's already loose just from the factory. Yeah, see, it fell right out. So Atherin and Scale Trains both put this little glippity gloppity gloopity stuff in here. This stretchy stuff that's a pain in the butt. Not a big deal. Once you have one window out, um, the other one's quite easy. My face isn't in there. Okay, so once you have the 
window pulled down. Either one, it doesn't matter. I got a pair of these little Zeron uh, pliers I use for this. And I'm gonna take it out, and it just pulls out, set it off to the side. Um, you can interchange the windows left to right. It's not a big deal. Um, if you don't have any of this stuff, this is the Uncure from uh, BSI or whatever you want to call it. It's the same stuff as this. It's very, very powerful. Don't use it in excess. It will strip paint. It will distort the window frame. But as you'll see here in a second, oh dear. Like I said, first tutorial video, bear with me. We're going to use this and a little drop on one of these guys here and go around this frame easily just to uh, take some of that stretchy glue tacky stuff off. If you go too hard for too long, you're going to notice the paint comes off the sill as well, which isn't a big deal because we're going to line it. But nonetheless, be very, very careful with this. Go a little bit and then a little bit more if you need it and so forth. Don't just... Uh, and then squirt it on there because it won't turn out the way you want. So once the first window is out, the next one's fairly easy. Get yourself a pair of tweezers or, or whatever, and you go in from the back without breaking the camera. That's up in there. And you're just going to kind of push, push, push without breaking too much stuff there. Come on. Where's my other pair? No, this might even work too. Here. Probably work better. And this window is just going to push out as well until you get to that point. These come out fairly easy on every model I've ever done, and I've done this to probably, I don't know, oh, 40 or 50 of these anyway. There you go. He's going to come out like that. <clears throat> I'm going to remove that window like that, and that's like that. So, windows are out. I don't know if you can see this on the camera or not, but you can see that shine in there. And that's where this stuff's gonna come into play. So, I don't know if I can, can I see this at the same time? I don't know if I can or not. So I'm just gonna use one little drop on there, super saturate it, like so. And I'm coming here. I'm actually gonna dry that off just a little bit because that's too much still. And I'm just gonna go around the frame here. Super nice and light. And this just makes it so that glue kinda, it doesn't take it all off. I don't know if it spreads it around, but I've noticed sometimes before I use this stuff, when I tried to put the window back in, it wouldn't sit flush and that drives me nuts. So here, you can see it already. Come on, I don't know if it's showed or not but the red's starting to come off a little bit. So that's what it does. It pulls the paint off a little bit too, which we're not too worried about here. But if you're trying to take back off parts you've glued on the wrong way, there you go, it's starting to get gloppy. Um, if you try to take parts back off with this stuff that you put on, it will distort the plastic and the color. So it's, it's, very, it's very aggressive stuff anyway. And a couple more of these guys, my, oh, sorry, I bumped you more of these little dudes here. There we go. I don't know if that's enough yet or not. You can start to feel it. It starts to get scratchy and gloopy. Yeah. And the color's coming up. It's pulling the paint off the uh, the sill already. Like the actual black that was put there by the factory. So, But that's not a big deal because we're going to put it back on. Yep, that's enough for that one. You don't need much. And then I'll spin this this way. You still see it? Kind of, sort of, but not really. But I'm just going, let's see. Uh, this is kind of hard to do. So kudos to all the guys who do these uh, tutorial videos. And we're just going around trying to soak that crap up that comes from the factory. Might have been a little heavy on the first one, but once it dries, it's fine. That's all we need. <clears throat> there. So that part's done. Um, these guys here, the handrails that go over top, or grab irons that go over top, I just forced it out like this, like that. And then I just 
move them up out of the way here so we can put them right back to where they came from later. Okay, we're back again. Um, first things first, let's add our window gaskets to the locomotive. So for um, these high horsepower units, like these and the ES44s, the Dash 9s, 75i, 70i's, M-2s, all those high horsepower for CN. Um, I like to use this guy here, the Sharpie. You want them to be super juicy, so if your Sharpie's getting dried out, don't use it. So all I'm gonna do here is this camera angle probably sucks, but I'm just gonna line it. That's all I'm gonna do. Slowly and easily, I'm gonna take this and just, there's still a little bit of glue on there, see? So that's good. Go around it. And if you get up here, it's uneven. It's not a big deal because you can take it back off with a little bit of mineral spirits or alcohol on your, uh, those little micro brushes. And that's why I always do this first because the clear coat from the manufacturer is very easy to work with. See, I just messed that up there, I went over top of it, so. But I also try to color in part of the gasket that they missed from the factory to try and make it look even. And then when I'm done, I'll go back with just one of those little micro brushes again and clean it up so it looks uniform like it was done from the factory. And that's all so you can see how this is starting to take shape there I think yeah you can probably see the, the difference here I'll hold it up to the camera anyway well this is not that easy to be honest with you this is harder than these guys make it look uh, maybe so there's a difference already so I'm gonna just uh, time-lapse this so you guys don't have to watch me color all this stuff in but that's what I'm doing this well that's a bit better i think can you see that in the camera yeah so you see there's little edges there it's not quite all even around the actual gasket not the inside but the outside which is what gives it it's a look of uniformity i guess from the factory i'm gonna go back and clean that up with just a micro brush and um, some mineral spirits on there just around it evenly and when i come back it'll be uh It'll be all nice and even. Okay, so here we are. I've cleaned it up, as you can tell. There's still a couple little spots, but you're not gonna notice this once the windows are in anyway. So it is a delicate little thing to do. And uh, you know, I'm just gonna keep trying. In all honesty, I don't know why this one was, uh, I think my Sharpie was sitting wrong for a long time. It got kind of juicy, but uh, most guys go by like the one foot rule anyway, or the three foot rule or whatever it is that people but once the windows are in, uh, it'll all come together. So, let's get to the windows. Let's see if I can get you a better zoom here. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So, windows. Pretty straightforward. You grab yourself a little pair of these guys again. Snip, snip, snip. And with the white stripes to the top. As they came out, get that glue and stuff off there. Oh, this one has a bit of a crack in it from the factory. Hmm. So all we do is take our window like this and I'm gonna take the big Sharpie and I'm gonna line the outside of it. Like so, so just with the big sharpie again, and we're 
we're just gonna go around the window like so. Try not to, you know. And that's it. Just like that. Come on. Okay. There you go. So you can see the light doesn't come out of the sides anymore, the top. What we've done is create a border for the light not to escape. And then we're going to put these in there next. So I'm going to go do the other window by myself. And then we'll install them back into the locomotive. Okay. So the other window is done. This stuff here, canopy glue. I don't really know what it's really for, but bonds canopies and plastic it says the big thing about canopy glue is that it dries clear so I'm gonna take my canopy glue come on put a little dab on here that's all you need it's not much you probably can't see what I'm doing but this is all that little dots all I'll probably need for both windows then I grab my trusty tool for everything the model rarity related a mighty toothpick. Yeah, there you go. And we're going to, can you see that right there? There we go. Just a little dab, 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 nice and thin, and then we're gonna go around the window frame. And just nice and light. The Sharpie and the um, unglue stuff, the paint stripper slash plastic wrecker slash that stuff. It's pretty dry, so when I'm putting this in here, I can feel it. Now the stuff does dry clear, so you can go a little heavy with it, but like any glue, when you're putting it on, less is more. Just enough to hold it, not over excessive, so. You, see, you can't see that yet, so. You can see that there? Yep, so that nice little bead just around the window frame. This is actually a good angle for this, so. My right window, and on this one, it's there. We go. Don't scratch there, but I'm gonna grab it like this, right? And nice and easy. I'm just gonna go like this and slide it back in where it came from. It's okay if the glue squishes out. So I slid it in, and now I'm just gonna push it back in. Hopefully it'll fit back in its little hole in here. It will with a little, little love. No, oh. it wants to be a pain in the butt today. I see. There we go. That one's in. Oh come on, get back in here. So that side's in. I don't know why it's pivoting on this. This doesn't usually happen. It's in there flush right now, so. And just like that. When I'm done, I get down to the side and I, I look up this way because the windows being outside of the cab drives me nuts because the real ones, it's it's centered perfectly in there with the gasket around it, so. Um, canopy glue does not dry fast. I mean, it dries relatively, just not like CA glue, so. As it goes, I'll just give it a little push back there and it'll end up sitting where it's supposed to. And the little white bead won't be there, it dries clear. And that's it. So even with the glue in there, you can tell. Oh, this light is terrible, huh? Is that better? Can you see it now? There we go, kind of, sort of. Even with the white on there, you can see how the difference is gonna be when it's done. And it's a nice and flush, and that's what you want. So, um, there's not really much point in showing you guys the other one. That's how I do these. Uh, when the windows are in, I'll put the wipers back in with some canopy glue. Sometimes CA glue, depending if they're finicky or not, because it is a pain in the, in the butt. There's no doubt about it. And these little grabs just fold back down and go back in where they belong. And that's it for step one. So I'll do this video in series because I can tell by how much I'm talking, it's a little bit of a lengthy one. Um, first, window gaskets. 
Next, we will do panel liner, which is a product from Tania. And it's thinner that goes with it and the process I used for that. And then after that, um, we would do fine acrylic work with the brush, like little spots and rusts and things like that. But I chose this unit because it's pretty clean. And then the third series or part of the series will be airbrush and the various colors I use. And it doesn't take long either. And then we clean and paint the wheels and seal it up and it's done. So this will be the end of part win uh, one, window gaskets. Okay, so tomorrow I'll try and do the panel liner part. And then Friday I'll try and do the airbrush part. And hopefully it helps you guys. So <clears throat> I've had lots of comments on these window gaskets. So that's how I do it. Anyway, guys, that's, uh, that's all for this one. Cheers and happy modeling.